بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا اللهم نور قلوبنا بعلمك واستعمل ابداننا لطاعتك وفقنا لما تحب وترضى من القول والعمل والنية والهدى إنك على كل شيء قدير أما بعد Yesterday, alhamdulillah, beloved brothers and sisters, we uh, spoke about the aspect of tawakkul And each of these topics, I'm sure we all appreciate the fact that they are so lengthy and detailed And within 20-30 minutes, uh, uh, you know, we really cannot do justice to that So there are definitely going to be parts of that, of those, or... Uh, um, Elements of those program, or these those qualities, these characteristics that we may not be able to properly cover, and so one of the you know it's fine, but certain sometimes there may be a portion of it that gets left out, and someone may misunderstand that. So that's why I just wanted to mention one aspect of but yesterday's topic with regards to tawakkul. It is um, Needless to say, but still, since some may misunderstand it, needless to say, the fact that when we speak about tawakkul, we are absolutely not um, saying what Allah and His Rasul have not said. Which is a tawakkul means that a person relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without making any effort on their own part. That is not what tawakkul means. Tawakkul instead means a person makes their full effort, but does not rely upon their effort lies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after having done the effort. Because the belief is that we have to do the effort since this is the place of asbab and place of means, this world. But the one who will make those means effective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husband and wife are married. How many, subhanAllah, husbands and wives are married but have no children? How many have few? How many have many? How many have only boys? How many have only girls? How many have both? The results are always different. Just because the means are present does not mean the results will be the same or that the results will also always be found. How many people have completed their degrees and are looking for your work? Right? We can't account. How many people simply do not have work although they have all the means for it? So the means themselves do not bring results. It is Allah's amr and Allah's command with it. So tawakkul is not about the, the, what we do and what we don't do. Tawakkul is a condition of the heart. Tawakkul is not the condition of the hands. Tawakkul is a condition of the heart. So that the hands are busy doing the work, but the heart is absolutely relying not on the hands, but only on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. And that is why they say that a person who has proper tawakkul, although he is using his hands to do the work and he has the means in front of him, but he has more trust in what is in the hands of Allah than what is in his hands. Simple as that. He has more trust in what is in the hands of Allah than what is in his own hands. The today's attribute and quality that was found amongst the Sahaba that we want to discuss from amongst the many beautiful qualities of theirs is Al Haya. And this is a very beautiful, salient quality of the companions of these Rasulullah and has been mentioned as the most salient feature of this Ummah. The Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that how every ummah and every nation has a specific characteristic that they're well known for. And this ummah, their characteristic that they're well known for is al haya The definition here mentioned regarding of al haya is huwa taghayyurun wa inkisarun ya'tari al-insana min khawfi ma yu'abu bihi wa yudham. Haya is that change that overtakes a person. In Kisar, it is a person breaking down or becoming humble. Taghir change. Ya al insana. It overwhelms a person. It 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 takes on a person. It takes over a person. Some sort of change. Some sort of humility. Min khawfi ma yu'abu bihi from the fear of that which he is going to be blamed for, for which he is going to yudham what he's going to be what people are going to lament him upon, what people are going to find fault within him. So the fear of people or someone finding fault in him, this creates an inhibition from doing something 
that he, we, he would have otherwise done. That's what Haya is. Junaid Baghdadi says, Al Haya'u ru'yatu al ala wa ru'yatu al taqseer, fa yatawaladu baynahuma halatun to sum al Haya. He says, Haya is to look at the blessings of Allah and then to look at how unfulfilling we have been towards Allah's rights. Compare Allah's blessings upon us and compare our weakness and our disobedience in front of Allah. When you compare these two things, a certain condition will come to fruition, a certain condition will come to life, and that condition is called haya. And the Noon al Misri, Rahmatullah Ali said, Haya wujud al Hayba. It is the presence of awe, fil qalbi, in the heart. Along with the fear of what we have done in the past in front of Allah. So it is the presence of awe in our heart with the impending fear of what has happened in the past that Allah has seen about me. So these are all beautiful, amazing different explanations of haya. The in Sharia, in Islam, these are you know a very general, non-specific to a person explanation of haya is khuluqun yabathu ala tark al-qabihi wa yamna'u min at-taqsiri fi haqqi dhi al-haq. Very, mashallah, comprehensive definition. This is a characteristic that encourages you, pushes you, stimulates you to leave what is evil and prohibits you from the from not fulfilling a right that belongs to someone. Haya is something that force, encourages a person, pushes a person away from doing something that is an act of lewdness, an act of sin. He doesn't do it out of haya. And when it comes to the fulfillment of the rights of others, haya stops a person from not going through and fulfilling it. He has to fulfill it because he's got haya. So these are the various definitions that are found. Now if you let's look at Haya of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أشد حياء من العذراء في خدرها. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had more haya than a unmarried young girl who is in her hawdaj, who is in her private room, we would say now. Who is tra- when traveling? She's got her own private caravan. She has got her own, uh, you know, pri- a private area in a caravan that is zipped up, that is locked up, or rather, I should say, closed up, and uh, veils are placed over it. Or you could understand it as an unmarried person, a young girl who has got her own room, even at home, private room, right? No, no one, no boys are allowed to enter that. That's just kind of how it is, right? This is a girl's room. Meaning the example of someone who has a lot of haya within society. What was the example of that? A young unmarried girl. That she would be the example of someone who would have inhibition. As it comes in hadith as well. That when it comes to the issue of marriage, that due to the, in, the intensity of haya within a girl, she may not be able to clearly tell her wali, that she is okay with a certain proposal. Because of her not out of her shadid haya, she might not be able to say that. So that is why it's mentioned that her silence will equate her being happy with it. And if she, and if she cries, then that means she's upset about it. But even being upset about it, she out of her haya, she feels hard to speak up and say that this proposal I don't like and this proposal I like. What's the issue? You say, what's wrong with that? The guy got to break it down because people don't understand these things anymore. Before they would understand it. But the idea is that when a person, if it's, it is against haya or a, 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 against the dictate, against the characteristic of a girl who has immense haya for her to tell her father or to tell her mother, I like this boy. It's very awkward. Very ajib. Her own haya would not allow her to say that. But at the end of the day, we have to get her married to someone she's actually interested in getting married to. So this is why 
It's mentioned sukutuha ridaha. Her silence will equate her pleasure. Not anymore now, right? Now everyone is, you don't have to even bring this up. It's, it's, it's a whole different environment. But I'm just trying to say, now take that example of who, is, who Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi how much haya she has. And Abu Sa'id Khudri says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had more haya than her, than that girl. Now, haya does not mean you're shy that you're not able to speak the truth. Nabi Alayhi Wasallam, there's no one who spoke the, the truth louder than the Prophet Alayhi Wasallam. No one who established the truth more than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one who stood up in, in opposition of falsehood more than him. No one who was ready, who was more courageous than him. No one who was willing to uh, go in the battlefield first and to see what's happening besides him. He had chivalry. He had, he had awe. He had uh, no fear of speaking the truth. He had all of those outstanding qualities. And along with that, he had haya. Sometimes we misunderstand, or I say most of the time probably, this concept of haya is misunderstood. That a person who has got haya, that means if something wrong is happening, he's not going to speak up. Because he's got haya. Something, some, some, uh, the order of Allah is being broken, he's not going to speak up. Because he has haya. This is not what haya is. You can, you can be the most forward person when it comes to establishing the truth. And at the same time, you can have also the most haya. And who, who, who combined that? No one better than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إِذَا كَرِهَ شَيْئًا عُرِفَ ذَلِكَ فِي وَجْهِهِ When he dislikes something, it was known, you could see it on his face. Meaning due to his extensive haya, he may not want to speak up about something that he didn't like. Not that's haram. If it's haram, but even before he cor- corrects it, what would happen? The Prophet's face would turn red. And those around him would immediately recognize that this, what we have just done, is wrong. Just look at him, how upset he looks. So due to the extensive haya, people around him would recognize when they were doing something which was inappropriate. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, Al Haya khayrun kulluhu. Haya is all goodness combined together. What is haya? All goodness put together in one place equals haya. This is why we said that this was the most important feature of this ummah, most salient feature. The Prophet said when he wanted to correct someone, his sahaba. How would he do it? Many times the Prophet ﷺ, he would say, ما بَالُ فُلَانٍ يَقُولُ He could have said that. No, he didn't say that. But he said, وَلَكِنْ يَقُولُ مَا بَالُ أَقْوَامٍ يَقُولُنَ كَذَا وَكَذَا When the Prophet ﷺ would hear regarding someone that he's done something inappropriate and he's sitting now in the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ would of course not mention a name. The Prophet ﷺ would not highlight the person and he wouldn't even say someone. Instead he would say some people. Plural. Some people are doing something wrong. The, the person who was sitting there, he would realize that the Prophet is speaking to me. But the Prophet out of his haya, he would not want to call him out. So what I'm trying to say is that this is such an amazing quality. Until we don't see someone who has it, we won't understand it. It's very hard to explain in words. Haya is something that you have to actually witness it to understand it. The Prophet ﷺ's haya that you find now in Uthman radiallahu anhu. Let's speak about the, some of the companions. It's mentioned, Aisha radiallahu says, that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu took permission to enter the the home of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was lying down on his bed and he was wearing or he had a woolen cloth of Aisha radiallahu anha over his body فَأَذِينَ لِي أَبِي بَكَرَ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave permission to Abu Bakr radiallahu anha to enter وَهُوَ كَذَلِكَ and he did not sit upright he continued to lie down wearing the cloth or this shawl of his a wife Aisha. Then 
Abu Ghraidullah spoke to him, got his need, whatever need he came for, he fulfilled it from Mansarif and he left. Fasta'adhan Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu then came. Fa'adhina lahu, he gave him permission. Wahu ala tilka al hala, and Umar radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't change his posture. Fa'adha ili hajatahu, he fulfilled the need that Umar radiallahu anhu came for, and he left. Qala Uthman, then Uthman radiallahu anhu says, Summa fta'adhan tu alihi, I took permission to enter the home. Fajalasa, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat upright. وَقَالَ إِجْمَعِي عَلَيْكِ ثِيَابَكِ And then he said um, Straighten up the cloth Straighten up the cloth Straighten up the shawl Then I fulfilled his Aisha says I fulfilled his need And he left Or sorry Uthman says I fulfilled my need and I left then Aisha Dlana says, I said, Ya Rasulullah, ma li la araka fazi'ta li Abi Bakr wa Umar kama fazi'ta li Uthman. Oh my dear husband, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that I saw that you did not straighten yourself up, sit up right, cover yourself, cover yourself up even further, meaning cover the shins, cover the shin up further for Abu Bakr and Umar. But you did that for Uthman. How come? So then the Prophet ﷺ responded, he said, Inna Uthman Rajulun Hayyun. Uthman anhu is a person who has a lot of haya. Wa inni khashitu an in adintu lahu ala tilka al I was afraid that if I allowed Uthman to enter to my home in a state where I have this shawl covering the top part and my shin is exposed. لا يبلغ إلي حاجته that Uthman رضي الله عنه out of شديد and ex- immense haya would not be able to open up to me he would feel that he is now overstepped the boundaries and entered in a very private area and this just feels awkward for me and in one narration the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha, Ala astahi bin man tastahi hil min man tastahi minhu al malaika. Shall I not have haya from the one whom even the angels have haya from? What's happening over here? You have the Prophet وسلم, who is doing something which is absolutely permissible. He's sitting at home relaxed and he has his satar covered. But there is another person who's coming who Rasulullah recognizes that he is, he recognizes his nature. And that if he comes here, he will feel very awkward to be sitting in front of the Prophet while the Prophet is relaxing. So now he, it's his need, it's Uthman Rikalana's need, but no problem. You have to honor your guests, you need to honor those who come visit you. Okay, and of course you need to honor your mom and dad And you need to honor your spouse And you need to honor your siblings And you need to honor your children So we need to ensure that when it comes to Our haya We have to Have understanding Of who we are sitting with And as much as people nowadays think And do not like the discussion of clothing It's a taboo discussion Let's not talk about it that's why it's out of control because no one wants to correct anyone. I saw a video from a new, I think a New Jersey school where the, the superintendent of the school, it's morning assembly, and hundreds of students are there, and he is um, explaining the dress code of the school, public school, that these type of things should not be worn. This is where we give up in like you realize society is done in this country and you have some 16 year olds, 15 year old bubble bubblegum popping girl, you know, who's got her phone with her. She's filming live on some platform and she starts challenging the superintendent and says, Why? Why can't we wear that? You know, inappropriate clothing where the majority of the body is revealed. And so she starts speaking in front of this packed gym of, of, of people of, of students and teachers and staff 
And something along the lines, I don't remember, it's a couple of years ago, but you can find it if you want to. But um, she says something like, oh, is it because men can't keep their, can't control themselves? She's telling the, you know, this senior person who's probably in his 50s. Why should, why should we have to um, dress in a certain manner because men can't control their gaze or something like that? And I was just, people are like clapping. People are giving thumbs up. And I'm thinking that subhanAllah, like literally society is down the drain, man. That you have a 16-year-old, 15-year-old high schooler who has the audacity to speak like this in front of hundreds of students, in front of staff members, in front of a person of authority. To say, I will dress in as inappropriate manner, as revealing as a manner I want. And if you say anything, then I'm going to ru- uh, shout right back at you. This is not courage. This is not valor. This is not self-confidence. This is outright shamelessness. I want us to understand this very well. Because we are conflating these two things in our communities. We are conflating and confusing two completely different concepts. What is one of them? One of them is courage. One of them is valor. One of them is strong confidence and self-esteem. And the other one is outright audacity and shamelessness. To speak confidently, مضبوطي سے, you know, to speak while you're trusting yourself and um, not being afraid of crowd. This is good sifat if you have to come give a bayan. لیکن بے حیائی کو کہنا کہ یہ جو ہے کانفیڈنس ہے کہ واہ ہاؤ سیلف کانفیڈنس ماشاء اللہ یہ نہیں یہ سیلف کانفیڈنس نہیں ہے یہ کیا ہے بھائی یہ بے حیائی ہے بے غیرتی بے حیائی ہے کال اٹ وٹ اٹ از دس بے حیائی سو اف سم ون یعنی وٹ ایم ٹرائنگ سی کلوتھنگ اینڈ ہاؤ ٹو کور اپ انفارچونیٹلی از اے ٹاپک دیٹ ناؤ ڈے از نو حلقہ یو کین اسپیک اباؤٹ اٹ دا یوتھ قیامس youth qiyams that are happening now in Ramadan and outside Ramadan how often is this talked about to the youth both to the boys and to the girls if someone says why are we focusing on the girls you know why simple use your mashallah aqal that Allah has given you the rules of hijab are much more extensive for girls than they are for men there's the word of hijab is not even used for men the aspect of jilbab, the aspect of khimar, the aspect of niqab, the aspect of the entire body being covered during salah. Is this for men? So if you have a problem with this, you have definitely the problem with Allah and His Quran. You have definitely have the problem with the sharia. You figure it out yourself. Why are we keep on saying, brother, why are we always speaking about women? Why do women are being abused? They're, they're always being spoken about the clothing. What are you talking about? The amount of discussion that is in the Quran about the hijab of women is not about the men. The men have to definitely guard their gaze. The, the, they have to protect themselves from zina. There's enough, there's a whole talk, topic on that. But when it comes to covering themselves up, the hair, the hair for a man is not part of satar. We, can perform, we perform our salah with our hair exposed. Even if we're wearing a topi or a kufi, still a big chunk of our hair is exposed. But for a lady, if that's not even non-mahram, if her own, while she's performing her salah, her neck is open, her nape, she's privately in her bedroom, she's performing her tahajjud salah. But her neck is open, her nape is open, her hair is open, her, her arms are what you call her, uh, chest is open, her back is open, her uh, legs are open. Any portion of this body. So we know that, she knows that, no matter what madhab you're following, your salah is invalid. It's not about, oh, which man is looking at you? Who, which man is looking at you in your bedroom in the middle of the night? While you're performing salah. It's not the issue about men. It is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this status to women. That they are of a different breed, a different creation of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be protected. And that's their beauty in it. This is a lengthy topic, which I have spoken about multiple times in my tafsir. But whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the beautiful qualities of the women of Jannah, and the hur of Jannah, always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highlight the fact that they have Haya. Maqsuratun fil khiyam. Lam yutbithunna insun qablahum wala jan. Qasiratu tarf. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, 
in Surah Rahman. The women, the Hur of Jannah, Qasilat al Tarf, they have their gazes lowered. Niche dekhna wali hai, lerkiya hai. Allah is describing their eyes. Where are they looking? This is way before any man has entered Jannah. Allah has already created those Hur. But the idea is that this is the beautiful quality. That a beauty in, in a lady comes from Haya. And so since the Hur are very beautiful, that is why Allah is highlighting the Sifat of Haya. So uh, clothing is again, people don't want to speak about it. But Haya starts from your clothing. Does it end at your clothing? No. A person can wear proper uh, clothing, man or woman, covering the entire body. But unfortunately, can be shameless. We see, you see that. Astaghfirullah. Because many times, jilbab, hijab, niqab, gloves, thobe, topi, kurta, shalwar, kameez, this become very cultural. Allah forbid the one who's running, the nightclub also is dressed in that manner. Seriously. Some of the biggest oppressors of the world today, the biggest zalim, the biggest munafiq of the world, they're dressed in thobe and kurta. And they have blood of... Thousands in their hand, millions. Because they're wearing it not because they want to be close to the Sunnah of the Prophet and want to wear modest clothing, they're wearing it because of their culture. So many times hijab and jilbab and niqab also become very cultural. That a person has that but does not have haya in it. So this is why, mark my words what I said. Clothing is part of haya but it doesn't end there. We cannot exclude it to say, let's speak about haya and exclude clothing. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. Meaning, it is not possible that a person says, I have haya, and haya is in the heart, because this is what they say nowadays. Haya is in the heart, and don't worry about my clothing. This is like someone who would say, Alhamdulillah, I am walking, I have haya in my heart, and I choose to be 100% naked. But I have haya, a lot of haya. You can't see how much I have in my heart. Would you believe that? If you have haya in your heart, it would reflect in the way you dress. Yes? How can you walk around naked and say you have haya? Well, similarly, how can you walk around with a matter in a manner that is not acceptable by Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and say I have haya? Stop judging me. This is the, the problem. A person who is kullu inahin yatarashahu bima fihi, every gabulet, every cup, every bartan, every dish, you will pour out from it what's inside it. A bowl of milk will give you milk when you pour it. A bowl of water will give you water when you pour from it. You cannot have a bowl of milk and you pour it, it becomes water. Or water, it becomes up milk. If there is haya in the heart, then the actions that come from that heart will also be of haya. Does that make sense? So the Prophet Wasallam's first reaction of haya, what did he do? What's the first thing he fixed? Clothing. He went above and beyond how much he had to cover in order to make Uthman radiallahu anhu feel comfortable. So how a person dresses with his spouse has to be different than how he dresses in front of his parents. In front of his children. In front of his siblings. Cannot be the same. How a person dresses at home inside the house cannot be the way you dress when some guests come at the door. Or someone is dropping off something. You cannot just say, I was just like, yeah, nah, aajkal. People, are, people don't have their scarf on. People are wearing their t-shirts and their sweatpants. And their shorts and Allahu Alam. And then they go open the door. Why are you opening the door like this? Don't. Make the person wait. No problem. Do not run to the door uncovered. Cover yourself up properly. What you are in your bedroom, you don't need to show the world. You're not allowed to show the world. This is basic common sense haya. That a person says, I would not want to be caught out by outsiders dressed in the manner that I am inside my house. Similarly, then when a person leaves the home to go visit someone else, when a person goes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person goes to an Islamic gathering, the haya of that Islamic gathering is that a person dresses appropriately. Why do they, why you have these parties, you know where they say, uh, uh, what you call, tuxedo or suits only, or formal wear only. Even a gas station says, no shirt, no shoes, no service. You're supposed to have haya when you go to the gas station. Yeah, I agree, you're supposed to have haya. How about having haya when we come to the masjid? How about having haya when we come to an Islamic gathering? But because no one is speaking the common sense, that is why now people come in the most inappropriate manner to an Islamic conference, to an Islamic gathering. It looks like they're going out, Allah forbid, to some other party, some, you know, some sort of women's only party or some other type of namunasib thing to come to the masjid like that. I will keep it for another day. 
where all the ahkam and the commands that Rasulullah Sallallahu had told us on how men and women, and especially women, should go when they go to the house of Allah. Quran says, "Khudu zina takum andi kulli masjid." Take, prepare zina, beautify yourselves when you go to the house of Allah. What does that mean? Beautify yourself, not to attract some other random person. The way what Allah wants to see upon you, wear that which Allah would be happy to see on you when you go to perform salah. And the kulli masjid is not just masjid, yani masjid like a prayer hall, but masjid means salah. Every single time we stand up to pray, that is why he or she will make sure the clothing is most appropriate. So we see that this is a sifa of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum arda, that the Prophet وسلم, is appreciative of the haya of Uthman, that he says even the angels have haya in the presence of him. I'm going to quickly go over a few other uh, examples of this. It is mentioned regarding Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, in kana la yakunu fil bayti wal babu alayhi mughlaq he would be inside a door he would be inside a room or a house and the door will be locked fa ma yada'u anhu thawb li yufida alayhi al he would not remove his clothing when he had to take a shower or relieve himself he would not completely remove his clothing because of haya and yamna'u al haya an yuqima sulbahu he would not stand up straight due to haya meaning if he had to take a bath he would have clothing on shawl on lungi on izar on lower garment on and number two even in that state he would not be what? standing he would sit down and take a bath even though he's inside a room inside his house with the door closed meaning our bathrooms that even in the bathroom there is haya if it, in the lives of the sahaba radiallahu anhum wa arda. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, what does he say? Haya from who? In the bathroom, who's there? Tell me. Who's there? Go here. Allah. It's haya from Allah, haya from the angels. There's no other human being. It's not about haya from men and women. Oh, men are, what's wrong with your guys and your eyes, man? It's not about the men. Men and women are supposed to have haya from Allah. You're supposed to have haya for your own self. Haya for your own self. Abu Bakr Siddiq says, Istahyu min Allah. Have haya from Allah. Abu Bakr Siddiq says, Allah say haya karo. Allah say shalom karo. Fa inni la adkhulu al khala. For indeed I enter the area of, of relieving myself. Fa uqanni'u ra'si. Right? Uqanni'u ra'si. That I keep my face forward. Haya al min Allah azza wa jal. Haya, having haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning arfa'uhu mudiman nadari lil amam I keep my head raised I do not want to look at my own nakedness do not want to look at my own body haya'an min Allah while having haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah how far we are from this where the ummah is going the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned Regarding another another Sahabi, it says Ash, Abdul Ashaj Abdul Qais radiAllahu anhu is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Inna fika la khulqain yuhibhum Allah. Indeed, you have two qualities that Allah loves. One is al hilm forbearance, and number two al haya modesty." Qultu qadiman kana fiya aw hadithan. I asked him, Ya Rasulullah, are these two qualities within me from a long time or have I just recently, you know, adopted them? قَالَ لَا بَلْ قَدِيمًا He said, no, these are very old attributes and qualities you have. قُلْتُ Then I said, الحمد لله الذي جبلني على خلقين يحبهم الله I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created within my own nature two such characteristics that He loves. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to actually ask Allah to create haya within us and our children, within us and our siblings. We have to ask Allah, that Ya Allah create within me this shame from you, number one. Shame from the angels who are writing, the book of, who are writing in the book of deeds. That's why we're not supposed to speak in the bathroom. Because the angels have to write everything. And when a person is now unclothed, then an angel has to write. It hurts him, it upsets him. 
that I have to do my work, but this person is in a, a state that he shouldn't, that I don't want to be with next to him. So this is one of the many reasons why we have been prohibited to speak in the restroom. Against hayat. A person runs out of water and you're in a public bathroom, you knock on the door. You push your, your jug outside. You don't sit and speak. We know that this is a normal characteristic. But now, do we have that at home? People sit there, chat, people talk. You know, kids are talking while they're taking their baths, their showers, etc. These are not qualities of hayat. We have to teach ourselves, number one, what haya is, and we have to teach our children. And since every day we've been reflecting on the people of Gaza as we, about each quality, there was a post from the Turkish news media I saw that ta- spoke about the women of Gaza who said that every single night, even in, the, in the, uh, even in the darkness of our bedroom, before we go to bed, we put, we put on our full jilbab and we put on our scarf as though we're about to leave the house. Not knowing what will happen in the night, our home may be demolished, may be uh, bombed, and our bodies will become exposed. And we do not want that our hair or any part of the body becomes exposed in front of others when we die. So we prepare ourselves as though we're going to be outside before we go to sleep. This is not some hearsay. This is from the Turkish news media, the, the you know, outlet that I read, uh, uh, you know, subhanAllah, that, in the interviews. This is exactly what the women, if you look at any picture right now still, that's coming out of Gaza, till t- today's pictures, how many young 18, 19 year old girls do you see walking around in t-shirts with, with their hair exposed? Walking around in, in sweatpants, you know, with their hair exposed, with their, t- with their arms exposed. Find me. How many you find like that? Everyone there, even while the whole place is being bombed, top to bottom. They don't have a place to eat. They don't have nothing to eat. But you'll see that they have not lost their haya. And that's exactly how the Sahaba were. That they were people who were dedicated to this. This is what we live for. This is what we die for. You can, you can yank away from me my house. You can yank away and destroy, kill my kids in front of me. But you're not going to be able to take away my haya from me. I'm not giving that up. That's exactly what the men and women of Gaza are saying. And look at the luxurious and comfortable lives you and I live in. To what degree do I have haya within myself? Do my children have haya? Do my spouse, do my siblings have haya? This is a question for all of us. We have to honestly start working on this. And the more you read about the lives of the Sahaba, in each of these qualities that we discuss every night, the more we will start reflecting how far we are away from them. They are the gold standard, the only standard that is acceptable. We have to ensure that we get that standard within our lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes myself and all of us here and our wives and our husbands and our children and our parents and our siblings men and women of haya. And I ask Allah azza wa jalla that He immensely reward our brothers and sisters Gaza for them remaining steadfast on their haya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the highest levels of Jannah al firdaus May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them respite. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them ease and comfort in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their martyrs. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give patience to those who they left behind. Let us all inshallah proceed downstairs for, uh, uh, for iftar. Everyone please make your way downstairs. And inshallah we'll do the dhikr and dua from here. We have about eight minutes for the adhan. La ilaha illa Allah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam La ilaha illa Allah 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 La ilaha 
a, a beautiful life after this Ramadan and allow us to lead a life of, Ya Allah, free from any major sin. Allow us to lead a life in which our heart is connected to your house. Allow us to lead a life in which our heart is connected to the masjid. O Allah, allow deen to come into our spouses, deen to come into our children, deen to come into our parents, deen to come into our siblings, deen to come into the Ummah Muslim, uh, the Ummah Muslim, Ya Allah. O, o Allah, we ask you to open up the doors of hidayah and guidance, Ya Allah. O Allah, the quality of haya, which is known as the most salient feature of this ummah. And O Allah, your Nabi has said, when haya is lifted away from any community, then iman will also be lifted. That he said that haya and iman are together. They have been joined together. When haya, when one of them goes, the other one will follow. O Allah, please protect our communities from losing their haya. O Allah, please protect our families from losing their haya. O Allah, and save them from losing their iman. O Allah, we ask you, Allah, to make it easy for every one of us parents, Ya Allah, and our children to, to create an environment home where we're learning haya and we're implementing it ya Allah oh Allah oh Allah we ask you to grant all of us the ability to be dutiful to our parents and grant ch- parents ya Allah dutiful children ya Allah oh Allah make it easier for all of us to fulfill each other's rights ya Allah oh Allah we ask you ya Allah to allow this Ramadan to bring a, a ease and comfort to our brothers and sisters across the globe oh Allah in all war torn areas ya Allah in Palestine in, as well as in Sudan and Yemen in Syria and all other parts of the world where are, they are under siege or going through the suffering ya Allah suffering for months and years ya Allah we ask ask you to bring some comfort for them. Oh Allah, accept their shuhada. Grant them, grant them, accept their martyrdom. Oh Allah, we ask you to elevate their status. Oh Allah, unite the ummah. Allow the ummah, sleeping ummah to wake up. Allow us to wake up. Allow us to wake up, ya Allah, from and get out of our slumber of sleep, ya Allah, slumber of heedlessness, ya Allah. Oh Allah, accept our qiyam, ruku' our sujood, our sadaqah, our khairat. Oh Allah, allow every single day of Ramadan to be better than the previous one. Ya Allah, please, I beg you, ya Allah, allow every day of our Ramadan to be better than the previous one, ya Allah. Subhana rabbi ka rabbil izzati عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين make sure we recite the dua uh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم before we break our fast اللهم إني سرك برحمةك التي وسعت كل شيء أن تغفر لي and then once we break the fast ذهب الضم ضم وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله اللهم لك صمت وعلى رزقك أفطرت